Verbs in English can be divided into two main groups. Transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. To start with, we will look at transitive verbs. Transitive verbs require an object to complete their meaning. Imagine that I say, I need. The sentence is incomplete. There is information that is missing. You are probably wondering, you need what? You want more information. Why is the sentence incomplete? Because need is a transitive verb, and a transitive verb needs an object or something after it to complete the sentence. The object after a transitive verb can be a noun or a pronoun. Let's add the noun dictionary. The sentence becomes I need a dictionary. Now the sentence is complete and we can understand it. We added the object a dictionary after the transitive verb. The order is subject plus transitive verb plus object. We can see that transitive verbs need an object after them. Transitive phrasal verbs. The same rule applies to transitive phrasal verbs, which also require an object. If someone says, I'm looking for, you would automatically think looking for what or looking for whom. Again, this sentence is incomplete because we need an object after this transitive verb. Let's say that my keys is the object that I'm looking for. I'm looking for my keys. Now the sentence is clear and makes sense. We needed to add an object after the transitive verb to make the sentence complete. More examples of transitive phrasal verbs in sentences. He's looking for his passport. His passport is the object. You should put on a jacket because it's cold outside. Can you turn off the light when you leave the room, please? Now look at this sentence. Please take off your shoes before entering the house. The object appears after the transitive verb, as we have seen so far. However, sometimes the object goes in the middle of the transitive phrasal verb. For example, Please take your shoes off before entering the house. Both sentences are correct. With some phrasal verbs, you can put the object in the middle, but that is not always the case. We will see more about the position of objects with phrasal verbs in another lesson. Now, let's look at intransitive verbs. Intransitive verbs cannot have a direct object after them. For example, I smiled. Here, we cannot have an object after the intransitive verb smile. You cannot smile something. This is incorrect. The subject is doing the action of the verb and nothing receives the action. An intransitive verb does not pass the action to an object. An intransitive verb expresses an action that is complete in itself and it doesn't need an object to receive the action. Intransitive phrasal verbs. The same rule applies to intransitive phrasal verbs. You cannot have an object after an intransitive phrasal verb. 
My car broke down on the way to work. Broke down is the past tense of to break down. Break down means to stop working. My car broke down is another way of saying my car stopped working. You cannot break down something. Break down is an intransitive phrasal verb, so it does not pass the action on to an object. Some more example sentences with intransitive phrasal verbs. Can you sit down, please? Notice you cannot sit down something. I grew up in New Zealand. Grew up means to be raised as a child. I get up at seven every morning. What time do you think he is going to show up? Here, show up means appear. Some phrasal verbs can be both transitive and intransitive. For example, the phrasal verb take off. Take off can be transitive in one sentence and intransitive in another sentence. You need to be careful. Sometimes the meaning of a phrasal verb changes depending on whether it is transitive or intransitive. Let's look at the following example. When take off is transitive, it means to remove something. When take off is intransitive, it means to leave the ground and begin to fly. He took off his tie when he got home. He took off, the past tense of take off, is transitive, so it needs an object. In this case, his tie. Since there is an object after take off, we know the meaning can be to remove something. So he removed his tie when he got home. The next example. The plane will take off in 10 minutes. In this case, take off is intransitive and has a different meaning, the meaning of leaving the ground. You can see that here there are two different meanings or uses of take off. Also note that the same phrasal verb, for example take off, can have more than one meaning, yes, even seven or eight different meanings. See our lesson about the different meanings of the phrasal verb take off for meanings other than the ones we have already mentioned. A good dictionary will tell you whether a verb is transitive or intransitive. Next to the verb, you will usually see an abbreviation such as VT or TR, which mean it is a transitive verb, or VI or INTR when it is an intransitive verb. I hope you found this lesson about transitive and intransitive phrasal verbs useful. If you did, click like and subscribe to our channel so you know when we create new videos to help you improve your English. Have an awesome day!